two people in every hundred have a learning disability. How their disability affects their lives depends very much how severe the disability is, but also what type of support and opportunities they have. What we do know from research is that people with learning disabilities experience a lot of inequalities. They are less likely to be independent than others of a similar age, have fewer opportunities to do enjoyable things, have fewer friends and social contacts, and find it much harder to find work, even if they are very keen to do so. These inequalities often result in them feeling and very much being excluded from society. The question we are faced with is why are people with learning disabilities so often excluded and what needs to happen to make them more included in our society. People with learning disabilities say the biggest challenge they face is not their disability but negative attitudes and beliefs in society. One commonly held belief that gets in the way of acceptance is that they are fundamentally different and do not have the same hopes and goals as you and me, even though research tells us otherwise. To illustrate this point, we will now show you a clip from the film Heavy Load. This is a documentary about a band from East Sussex in England, made up of men with and without learning disabilities. They are all committed musicians, trying as any band does to succeed in the music scene, or most of the time just to have some good fun doing what they enjoy doing. Me, I sing. Nick plays tar. Mike plays drums, loud. Paul plays bass. Jimmy, he plays tar too. Please go absolutely crazy for heavy <laughs> If we get an uncle, we'll do Frank Butcher. <laughs> oh, yeah. If... I think we should stick, we should stick with the songs in here. Yeah. Okay. When I met them, they had been together for nine years, and legend had it that their music had neither improved nor deteriorated in all that time. <laughs> Onky Tonk Woman. I can do that. Who wants to have a go at Honky Tonk Woman? I'll do it. Jimmy wanted a band, and uh, me, me and him helped him. When I was working at uh, Jimmy's house in Seaford, I said to him, you know, is there anything you'd like to do, you know, with your guitar? And he said, oh, I'd like to be in a band. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. And so we uh, sent out a memo to other people in the organisation, other houses, and within a week we were rehearsing. Mick, he said, how would you like to come in the band? I phoned about it, dreaming about it, thinking about it, and I thought, I think I will. And then Paul Richards came. It was a band that, you know, playing just put a huge smile on your face, came home feeling really elated. Mine, yeah. I think we had about three or four songs and we thought, well, you know, that'll do, you know, and someone offered us a gig. Good evening, Dilson. I want you to come down and tell us because from Brighton it's heavy low. <laughs>
So Simon, why is tonight special? It's going to be on a date. It's my date. You're on a date? Nicole. But who's Nicole? My girlfriend. And me. And how, how easy is it to organise tonight then? Jim called them all. Jim, my manager, Dad called them. Right. Call the staff. Call all the staff at Nicole's house. Yeah. I can't do it, do it on my own. Jim do it for me. <laughs> Simon, so what do you love about Nicole? She's gorgeous. Ah, she is gorgeous. <laughs> She's my baby, that one. She's my baby. Would you say that you were in love? Yeah. Look at my hand. Ah! <laughs> What's it like being a girlfriend of a lead singer in a band? Oh, great. Yeah? Do you like, you like heavy load? Yes. You don't mind the music? I don't mind. Don't think it's too loud? I a bit. <laughs> It's just because of my dad. Because my dad loves his m music. You know, my parents were quite strict about the noise we made. There was music in the house, but not loud, as Michael would have liked it. He loved impersonating people. If music was on, he used to like to dance, or he used to like to impersonate Elvis Presley. Of all of the pictures on there, what's the most important one to you? Well, actually, the most important one of, of them all is um, my mum and my dad. Because, actually, I'm the only son. I know they are watching me from up above. My mum was really strict with Michael and she wanted him to be independent. She really wanted him to go into the group home, but she was really upset, you know, that he was leaving home. <laughs> I proved myself to be independent. I have been here for um, 19 years, but sometimes it gets me down. It's everything, really, everything. I would rather be with really all the actionists. I would like to live in Brighton. That's what I want to be. What's next? Just doing my policy. OK. I've got to approve myself to all the staff so I can do the, the cleaning, my flat, and be being myself clean and support myself and all that doing the cooking, washing up, hoovering. I've got to do all that. So then I have to move out to Brighton then. I just went to the, a girlfriend in Brighton. And uh, only if I can be socialised. Socialised is going out to meet a girl and uh, going clubbing and pubbing and all that. That's how, how you could get a girl. As you have seen, Michael has similar goals and hopes as anyone without disabilities. Government policies promote social inclusion and yet research shows that there's still a lot of segregation. For example, children with learning disabilities often still feel very much shut out even when they are in mainstream schools. We also know that members of the public are often unsure about contact with people with disabilities, not because they want to avoid them, but because they feel uncomfortable or a bit nervous about how to behave or what to do. The key message is that they are human beings like you and me, whether or not they have a disability and should be treated as such. Thank you for watching. Please complete the questionnaire that follows and make sure you take the opportunity to have your name entered in the prize draw as a way of us saying thanks for taking part. 
We will not store or use your details in any way other than for the prize draw.